Hello, this is Brother Cromer from the Maths Department of BYU Idaho, and this first video is covering Lesson Two, which is the statistical, pro statistical process and design of studies. So, first of all, what I want to cover is the five st processes in statistics. So, if you remember from the online textbook, the wiki, where it, where it describes uh, the story from Daniel, and basically the story from Daniel in the Old Testament is where he use the five step processes of statistics and so we have a little ditty here that we'll be using throughout the semester Daniel can discern more truth using the acronym DCDMT where D is for design the study uh, C is collect the data the second D is describe the data M is make inference and T is take action okay so design the study there's two important things about designing the study the first one is the question that you want to address so for instance, here's a few examples. Who are safer drivers of BYU, Idaho, males or females, or you could say Utahns or non-Utahns? Who's likely to win a presidential race? The last presidential race we had, it was between Romney and Obama. Uh, and so the next question is, is a vaccination effective in treating children? And then another question is, is the drug re rehabilitation program effective? So the second part of uh, the importance of designing the study is, what's the population of interest? Okay, so for instance, who are safer drivers of BYU, Idaho, male, males or females, um, or Utahns or non-Utahns? Well, the population is all BYU, Idaho students. I guess you could include faculty as well. The next question, who's likely to win the presidential race? Well, the population in this case are U.S. citizens who are likely voters to vote for the race. Okay, third question, is vaccination effective in treating children? Well, in that one, some students may feel like that it's actually the parents or the or the uh, or the physicians, but in actuality, the, it is the children. It's those. It's the children are being measured in terms of whether or not the vaccination is effective. And then, lastly, is the drug real, real rehabilitation program effective? In this case, it is drug addicts, those who are trying to recover from from their addiction. Now, the question is: Is it feasible to get data from everybody? Well, it isn't, so that's why we we obtain a sample. So that goes to our next step here is collecting the data. We collect a sample from our data based on how we design the study. So it's really important to know what your question is and then what the population is. And step three is describe the data. And here are some examples of uh, descriptive statistics. And so here's a, here's a bar chart and a, and, a, and, a bar, and a pie chart. These are examples of graphical descriptive statistics. There's also numerical descriptive statistics where we have an average, a median, a percentage, and, and another thing that's called a correlation, which we'll cover in a later uh, lesson. Okay, so there are so there's two different types of descriptive statistics: graphical, and numerical. And then step number four is where we talk about where we talk about make inference. And so, what is inference? An inference is basically where we take something from our sample. And if you look where my cursor is, we take something from our sample and we and we infer or we make a decision about the population based off of the sample. So if we take a small sample, uh, we take something that's smaller than the population, we're going to say, well, based on our sample, we think that this is, this is uh, representative of the population. So for instance, at the very bottom, we could take a sample of the U.S. and find that 49% of the sample would vote for Obama. We would infer this percent with the margin of error, which we'll talk about in a later lesson, to the whole population of the United States. This inf inference is different than deduction. Deduction is where we're taking something large and then we're making and then we're we're making a uh, something small. We're, we're saying, for instance, we have this big equation, and then at the end we have something that says x equals two. Okay. With inference, we're taking something small. And we are saying, well, based on this sample that's small, we're going to take, we're going to infer to the entire population. Okay. So then, finally, the last thing is, is that we get, we we take action. That's the very last step. And so, based on your results, you want to take action. Based on you, it, it could be merely publishing your results or making a recommendation based on the results that you have. Okay. So now, what I'd like to cover is the two different types of data. There's quantitative data, which is numerical, and there's categorical data, which is non-numerical. So quantitative, some examples of that are height, body temperature, cost of new medical equipment, the number of siblings in your family, or it could be a typical questionnaire rating from 1 to 7. Categorical type data, examples of this is gender, class, and college, and race. Also, uh, even though it's here that it says non-numeric, uh, Jersey number is also categorical, and here's the reason for it. 
what you can tell if uh, something is categorical, if you see it, uh, excuse me, let me back up for a sec. If you look at a number, a jersey number is 55, if you double that jersey number, does that mean anything? Or if you divide it by, if you divide it by two or add six to it, it doesn't, that number does not mean anything. So a jersey number or a phone number, that would be listed as categorical. That's the only time really that a numer uh, something that, that at face value looks numerical is actually categorical and not quantitative. Okay, so now let's talk about the type of data collecting. There is a census which is taken every 10 years, and we, ha we do that here in the United States as, uh, due to the Constitution. And then there's two other types. There's the observational study where we collect data, but, does, but we do not attempt to manipulate or influence the outcome. The examples of those are household and government surveys and then perhaps exit polls after elections. The, the uh, third type of method of data collecting is design experiments, and this applies to uh, applies a treatment to individuals and attempts to isolate the effect of the outcome. So, for instance, we may want to test a drug to see if the effectiveness of the drug it could be a drug for HIV, or it could be a vaccination as well. We could test to see if the vaccination is work, it works as well. Okay. So now the next, so sampling. Let's talk about sampling here. Sampling there is. First of all, the basic type of sampling is a simple random sample, which is a probability sample. And it consists of individuals from a population chosen in such a way that every set of n individuals has an equal chance of being selected. So it's basically drawing names out of a hat. Okay? So now we do random sampling to minimize bias. Okay? That's the main reason why we do random sampling. Now, aside from simple random sampling, there's other ways to do uh, random sampling. There's something called a stratified sample. We divide population, we divide the population into groups, and then do a simple random sample for each group. So, say for instance, if the population is BYU Idaho, and we divide into four, divide the population of four strata: freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. We divide uh, students in those four groups, and then we take a simple random sample in those groups. That's stratified sampling. Cluster sampling is where we divide the population into groups, take a simple random sample of the groups, and then sample everyone in the selected groups. So say, for instance, we decide to have all the apartment complexes that are BYU approved, and we take a simple random sample of those apartment buildings, and then we, sample, we try to sample everybody within those buildings. That's an example of cluster sampling. The third example, or the last example of a, of a valid sampling method, which is a random sample, is systematic sampling. And that's where we select every K individual, and then we choose the first person with the random start. Typically, you do this is that if you're if you're standing, say, by the devotional, and you want to do a survey before they walk in a devotional, you sample, say, one out of every five or six students that walk by. But before you do that, you have to take what's called a random start. So say, for instance, you do a one in six sample. Say, if you roll the dice and it comes out to be three you would sample the third person that walks by you first, and then you do every sixth person after that. So you do the third person, the ninth person, and the fifteenth person. Okay? So systematic sampling, cluster sampling, stratified sampling, and simple, simple random sampling are four methods of doing a random sample that we cover in this class. There is also invalid sampling methods, and what I mean by that is where it can introduce bias. There's something called a voluntary response sampling, and typically you see that when you see online polls where it asks you to take a survey. Usually those, uh, the reason why those are introduced bias is those that take the survey are usually the ones that feel very strongly one way or the other about a certain issue, and so you don't usually get the people who are in the golden middle, if that makes sense. And then also convenience sampling, and convenience sampling is where, for instance, you might see that at a at a mall where someone uh, grabs whoever they can to take a uh, to take an advertising or a marketing survey, and those are examples of invalid sampling methods. So I'll continue with this uh, video, wrapping it up with experimental design.